you know what, between this movie and my Western history classes, the only conclusion I can come up with is, people suck. Twelve Years a Slave is directed by Steve McQueen, written by John Ridley, and stars Chiwetel Ejiofor, Lupita Nyong'o, Michael Fassbender, Benedict Cumberbatch, and tons of other people. Now, Twelve Years a Slave is the absolutely, completely true story of a free black man living in New York in the 19th century. His name was Solomon Northup, and he was kidnapped and sold into slavery. And this movie pretty much just details his 12 years being a slave and just all the injustices that happened. And this is the first, if I'm not mistaken, first movie to really look at slavery like this in this extremely raw and real way. Now this movie is definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Like, I know some people who found it outright boring, but, you know, in my opinion, movies aren't th there just to entertain you. And, you know, 12 Years a Slave isn't even trying to entertain you, I think. It really is a movie that is trying to inform, to educate, and to disturb, and it does that very, very well. And I know a lot of people say it's overrated and stuff, but I guess I'm at the party that thinks this is, like, an absolutely tremendous film. I really honestly do think it is one of the best movies I've ever seen. And I really hate how period films are typecast just because, you know, someone makes a period film and it gets lots of critical acclaim doesn't mean it's bad or boring and stuff. And I really do think 12 Years a Slave deserved all its awards, especially its Oscars. The funniest thing I can hear is when people say that 12 Years a Slave is the safe bet. And I guess in the sense that it's a period film, but this is one of the, pretty much the most disturbing movie that came out last year. It is definitely not safe in that regard. But, you know, I really do think this is such an important film also for cinema in general, even for non-US audiences. I mean, Steve McQueen, the director, is British. He's not American. This is not, this is really supposed to be a universal thing, and it connected with me a lot. It's kind of hard to talk about 12 Years a Slave, but I'm going to try. But So anyway, this is a period film, as period films go. It looks exquisite, and but it's not lavish, you know. A lot of period films come off as somewhat artificial and alien because, you know, it's so grand and stuff, but here it really just feels so rooted. Everything kind of looks downright dirty, you know, the makeup, the costume design, the production design, and it's all photographed really, really beautifully and tragically. Like, every single frame of this movie is just, it looks, it really does look like a colorized photo of, like, from the 19th century, you know. Kudos also to the makeup people, again, because the, some of the wounds in this movie, like the whip scars and stuff, they look really disturbing and when violence starts happening on screen it's just mm, it's so hard to watch one thing that really helps with the scenes of violence is the sound design um things just sound really painful here whether it's a whip whether it's a paddle board a punch anything just feels really really invasive sort of like steve mcqueen is really showing us that hey this is what it's like no sugar coating nothing the score from Hans Zimmer is also just the right amount of tragic because it was it was riding a line so much I thought that it could have been like so weepy and sentimental but it never really swells up so much and just you know the score in general the way it sounds it really did just kind of sound like it was highlighting an undercurrent of emotions it wasn't you know trying to highlight something that was already there. I also really appreciated the songs in the movie. Now correct me if I'm wrong with my history because I don't really know US history. But the songs that some of these slaves sing when they're working really reminded me of gospel music. Is that where gospel music came from? But either way, that's really sad if that's where gospel music came from. But, you know, but I really enjoy gospel music. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But, you know, it's just nice to hear, like, them chanting during the working and stuff. It's just it's such an interesting small little detail when you talk about slavery, but it adds so much character. There's some sort of solidarity going on there. One thing I love about 12 Years a Slave is that it's loaded with themes and like little tiny details that suggest other things about this period in time. And this is the kind of movie where you really have to pay attention to what's happening because it's not going to tell you things about slavery. It presents you the events of what really happened and you have to kind of figure it out yourself. And it's really, really great filmmaking and it did not feel draggy for me at all. This movie's like 2 hours, 10 minutes and it just never felt like I was waiting for something to happen. It is a long movie though, and at, by the end you really do feel like time has passed. What I really like is that they did not show time cards of like year one, year two, some stupid thing like that. But after a while you realize, oh yeah, 12 years have passed. And I, I'm, I'm just assuming that when you're in a situation like this, time really does kind of feel like 
you know, this whole dragging thing, because no, no such thing as a calendar anymore, it's just one long thing until the ending. Of course, we gotta talk about the Academy Award winning script by John Ridley. This is a fantastic script. The writing really squeezes out insight out of everything, every little detail. But it, again, it doesn't bring that insight to the forefront. It just leaves it there for you to kind of discover. All the characters here feel like they're not caricatures. You know, it's so easy to go into this realm of caricature. That's what Django Unchained did. But you know, Django Unchained was great because it did that. But for this kind of movie, slave owners never feel like you know just pure evil bad guys, although they are really despicable. And the slaves, they really just, they feel so human. Like, one tough thing about slavery movies is making the slaves not seem like just property. And here, they really pull it off. And I love how the dialogue is so eloquent, especially from uh, Solomon Northup and the other, like, more educated slaves. And it's such an interesting contrast because they are so eloquent, while the slave owners, you can tell, they're pretty much idiots, you know, they, they're not educated at all. And at first, I think Solomon thinks he has an upper hand because he is educated, he knows a lot. But as time goes on, you realize that, you know, he's just kind of being beaten into submission, this silence. And, you know, as the movie goes on, it gets less and less eloquent, it just gets really, really quiet, and that's chilling. Of course, Chivatel Ejiofor gives a performance for the ages here. The acting in this entire movie is incredible from everyone, and Ejiofor just really leads the pack. He does such an understated, nuanced performance. I was expecting something like Oscar Beatty, and it really was not. There's, an, there's a scene in this movie, it's a really extended scene, where it's just a still shot of uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor just kind of looking around, and it's just closed up on his face. And he, it's just that look he gives summarizes his entire character. Like, you just see like all the 12 years in his eyes. And it's, it's such a great performance, but it does not stand out necessarily. Like, he's not saying, oh, look at me, I'm acting. It's really just pure performance. Lupita Nyong'o is not in this movie for long, which is why I wasn't really rooting for her in terms of the Oscar win, but she is very good in this movie. Michael Fassbender, Paul Giamatti, Paul Dano, and especially Sarah Paulson are all absolutely repulsive characters, and it was, they played them really well, because, you know, a good villain is someone you can hate for all the right reasons, and they did it really well, and especially Paul Dano, because when Paul Dano popped up, I was thinking, is he going to get beaten up in this movie too? And he gets beaten up in this movie, so I don't know. And of course, Benedict Cumberbatch is here, and you know he plays he plays a really interesting character because he is a slave owner, but he's a nice slave owner. But then you start to wonder, like, what is he still forgivable because he's nice, or you know he's not because he's still a slave owner? But all of this really is thanks to Steve McQueen. This is like his magnum opus, as far as I'm concerned. Again, he really avoids the Oscar bait thing because he is so completely human. Like he focuses on his human characters. Lincoln is a movie that really focuses on the politics of this uh, slavery thing, and you know it worked for that movie. Again, I love Lincoln, but here in Twelve Years a Slave, I think Steve McQueen really understood that this was a story about its characters and you know the human element in it, and he really pulled that off. No matter what's happening, it's always focused on the people. And Steve McQueen is a master of showing, not telling. There's so many scenes in this movie that are completely silent, no dialogue, and it shows so much like you can write let's say 10 pages about like one scene especially a scene that has to do with hanging and it's just there's just so much content in this and he was able to bring it out so well i know that the phrase masterpiece is usually reserved for older movies that have stood the test of time like psycho but you know who time will only tell if 12 years slave will retain its reputation now but as far as i'm concerned right now objectively speaking I really do think it's a masterpiece. This movie is totally worth watching at least once. Like, when you're old enough to watch it, it really is something you have to experience because this is like how to do a period film, the movie, and how to really talk about controversial topics. And, you know, this is going to be an important movie for years to come. People are going to look back at this and say, you know what, let's face the crimes we did in history and, you know, really try to remedy it. Let's not forget about it. Let's talk about it now. Yep, so that is my review for 12 Years a Slave. Have you guys seen it? What do you think of it? Whether you agree with me or not, whether you think it really did deserve that Oscar or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.